What's up, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Realize TV. Today we're back here in my shop because Super D prep is in full effect. It's my first time seeing my car since Jimmy at Matsuri, and let's face it, there was a little bit of carnage there. This car went through some a uh, little bit of abuse here. <laughs> oh no! I think uh, the wheel took most of the damage here. <laughs> Yeah, so the bodywork is in pretty bad shape. Another thing I promised myself is that I was gonna change the oil every event, and it's been like five. But of course, the single most important thing is that Super D is gonna be a night event, and we all know what that means. Aziz, light! Much better, thank you, Aziz. Now, I already installed some underglow on this car, but we always need more. First things first, let's go to the parts store and get some oil. Made it to the parts store, but before we can get some new oil, we have to dispose of some old oil, and I have one or two jugs. Alright, time to get some oil. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what any of the numbers mean on the oil. What is 10W? What is 5W? I have no idea. I literally, every time I'm in this aisle, I'm in the same predicament. I have no idea what I'm gonna oil to run in my car. No, I don't want that one. I think I used this one. All right, we're back in the shop. We've got our mystery oil, which leads me to my question of the day. What the f oil are you guys putting in your cars? Because honestly, I have no idea what any of this shit means. The only reason I run what I run is because the mad scientist Jason Kim tells me what to run, and I just do it brainlessly without asking any questions. Now, for all I know, he might just be sabotaging me and telling me to put some shit oil in my car so that I blow my RB25 up, and that would force me to get a Jay-Z. Too late. Yeah. Yum. Brilliant. All right, well with an upside down oil filter comes potential for disaster, and the only way to avoid a shop floor that looks like John Ruiz's. It's, why are these stupid cars so hard to work on? Is to chisel and hammer the filter. It's all about the details, and you gotta have the JDM spec Drift Tengoku work gloves. Ah! That didn't work at all. Hey, <laughs> oh, that wasn't so bad. <sighs> all right, got a new filter. These are pretty dope. They're probably like 15 times the price of a regular one, but I mean, come on, you can't argue with that. Everything's written in Japanese. Oh wow. Holy shizzle. Funnel. The moment of truth. Oh. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wop, wop, wop. Yeah. Alright, well now we got that money. 
All right, now we've got All right, well now that we've got that mundane oil change out of the way, let's uh, do some bumper repair because this thing is not looking so happy. All right, now we could totally just zip tie and duct tape this, but we got a little time and that's uh, a little ghetto. I've got some leftover fiberglass here. And when I say I, I mean this is probably my brother's. All right, guys. We took our sheet of fiberglass here and I just went ahead and cut up a little pieces of uh, very, oh, there's some tape, of varying sizes. We got some big ones, some little ones. And uh, fiberglassing is, uh, it's easier than you think. All right, here's the thing about drift cars, right? The damage on the bumper, it's pretty minor. I could totally just leave it if I wanted to and just go to the next event with the mentality of, why fix it? I'm just gonna break it at the next event. Because man, you gotta have pride in your car. You have to fix it. You have to fix little things, make it pretty for the next event, and then drive the crap out of it. And then if you crash it, then you crash it, and then you fix it again. You don't just let all the stuff accumulate, and then next thing you know, you're driving a missile. Because that's lame, nobody wants to see that. People wanna see good looking cars at events. Spectators love it, drivers love it. Just do it for yourself, man. Make your car look nice. All right, we got ourselves a cheap, a uh, little can of resin. It should come with a little bottle of hardener. When you buy this stuff, make sure the hardener is in there because sometimes people will go to the store and pop the lid off and just take the hardener because they ran out because they're idiots. Always make sure this is in there. All right, I don't usually do this step, uh, but I was watching the Jimmy Up How to Repair Your Bumper with Fiberglass video and uh, he recommended sanding it down. So I'm just gonna give this a quick sand. <laughs> quick sand. And a little bit of hardener, that was probably way too much. All right, well, hey, you know, I'm not the fiberglass master, but uh, it should hold. And I didn't have any clamps, so I had to use the next best thing. Don't even ask why I don't have regular duct tape. I have Hello Kitty duct tape in here. This is what I use. And yeah, whatever, man, it works. The last piece of the puzzle, though, is the corner that broke off that I used to mount the bumper. And that piece is right here. I don't even know how I'm gonna do this. And now, we wait. All right guys, Super D is gonna be a night event. So we gotta just add more glow all over the place. As much glow as we can add. By the way, I'm not wearing a turtleneck, it just looks that way, but I swear it's my sweater. All right, so the idea is pretty simple. I'm just gonna illuminate the engine bay with LED from underneath. It's gonna uplight the engine. It's gonna look phenomenal. And that'll be it. Not to mention, if my car breaks during the night, which it probably will, I'll be able to fix it because I'll be able to see. Not really, but that's the excuse I'm gonna go with. First things first, these wires are gonna go into the cabin. So, we're gonna lengthen the wires a little bit here. Booyah. Extended the wiring. We're gonna slip it into some of this tubing here. Uh, shout out to my brother Billy for uh, letting me use this. I didn't get permission, but uh, that's what you get for keeping your car in my shop. You guys already know this is my favorite part. Once again, on the hunt for power, eventually stuff's gonna stop working. There's gonna be too many damn accessories plugged in. Oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I had to stop filming because I was getting really pissed off, although I know you guys love to see that. So basically what happened is, I decided to get this fancy illuminated switch 
from AutoZone. I was like, this will be cool. It'll be illuminated. I can tell when this works. Well, I blew some fuses trying to use this thing, and basically, I can <laughs> hate it, and I'm gonna throw it in the trash. Uh, not to mention that the illumination for the button takes up so much power that the LEDs are like half dim. So, uh, this thing can suck it. And uh, I'm just gonna hardline this just to get this installed and get a new button later. So I bypassed the button, cause <laughs> that button. And I just hardlined it and uh, check it out. So now we gotta route this. I love it when the paper rips. That makes me so happy. Oh my god. Oh, perfect. The best part is this adhesive doesn't stick at all, so this is all just gonna come undone. I love when the paper rips. It's like, you know what? This wasn't easy enough. Let's throw in a real challenge. Let's put in shitty <laughs> paper. Like, thank you for doing this paper. Thank you. I didn't want to be home right now. Eating and then going to bed. Going to work. I wanted to be here. Ripping this paper off one inch at a time. All right guys, well there it is. How to up your engine bay game 101. Super D, here we come. Roll detail shots. Well, that's all the time we've got for today's show. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button down below. If you guys are new around here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button. We got new videos every single Friday. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace.